Okay, what we got here is another fabrication situation. All right, you remember when I showed you these dog bone drive shafts? Okay, I, I thought I would be able to reuse them. Can't. The new motor is just a little too big for that, just barely. So, it's time to fabricate drive shafts. Now, I've already done a set. And let's zoom in on them so you can see. And these are like the other ones that I made. As you can see here, I have used a copper. That is a, I believe that that's a 14 gauge copper wire. And I ran out of that, but I had a big piece of 12 gauge. So the ones we're going to make right now are 12 gauge. But let's let's check it out. Let's see how how does it run. I've already taken this around the 15 inch radius and it works. That's pretty good. Now you you know you've not done a good job on drive shafts if the motion is really jerky. There, that's pretty nice. And compared to the way we did it in ancient times, with the wire stuck in this plastic, which does work though. I mean, if, if you can't do what we're about to do making a copper one, you can always do this. It does work. However, and I would say, is if you're going to do this, don't put the wires parallel to each other. Put one in this way, then turn it, and then put the other one in the other way. Gives you a smoother shaft. And they did not do this on the factory ones. And so when I tested one that hasn't been touched, you can definitely tell that it is not as smooth as by offsetting them like I did there. Okay, so how are we going to do it? How are we going to make this? Well, one of the things we will need is... The stuff I told you never to use, now you need to use it. Okay. So, what I've done is, here's the next one ready to go. Basically, I have cut a piece of, of this 12 gauge right here. And I basically matched it up so it doesn't. It would have side, it would be able to go back and forth in there. I need to account for the fact I'm going to put another piece on the end. I don't want it to, I don't want it super tight. I want it to have a little play in it. All right, so now, here we go. Let's go ahead and make this thing. So, I've got it, got him in my little helping hands here. I'm going to put some acid on the end of it. Just like that. Okay. Then I'm going to take my powder and pencil. Clean the tip just a little bit like that. Grab some solder. And go ahead and solder on a ball. Just like that. There. Very nice. Now for the tricky part. What I've done is I've cut off some little pieces. One end is going to get a long piece and one end is going to get a short piece. The reason for that is the short one goes inside the flywheel. The long one needs to, it needs to be just barely outside of its joint. Just barely. So, then I took cut off wheel and I just ground a little flat spot on the top of it. So we're going to hit that with some acid like that. Let's, let's go ahead and just do them all right now. Okay, so we're going to put some acid on here. Why are we using acid? Stuff I tell you not to use, but this is that time. And we are making a mechanical piece here. And we will clean the acid off when we're done. But we're making a mechanical piece. 
not going to be messing around with flux core and and stuff like that. We are going to use acid to make sure we get a mechanical joint. One more. Go ahead and pick up some solder. Take the first guy. That's one. Take this little guy, find his spot. Get some more. That's three. One more. That's four. Okay, there's our second step. All right, now here's the tricky part. Got a nice ball on the end of. Up here, there's got to be, there's got to be a little, basically a ball of solder on the end of it to make this work. Now you know, wonder some of the uses for this thing right here. I'm going to show you one right now. One of the hardest parts of this is grabbing on to one of these pieces with the pliers, setting it in here the right way. Okay, so the flat side's facing down where I'm going to solder on, and then holding on to it with a steady hand. So that's why I've got this guy here under my wrist. Okay, I'm going to put my wrist on here. I want to be able to hold on to this so that it's mostly level. Looks good. Okay, now how do we get it on there? Take some acid, put it on there, good to go. Now, I'm going to set this down, try not to shake too much, and then I'm going to go ahead and heat her up from the back side. There we go. Look at that. Very nice. Okay. Now, it's going to be hot, so let's go ahead and take it out. Flip it around. We'll line it up in a minute. But first, we're going to get let's get our solder on there. All right, put the acid on. Right, remember, get a bead, get some solder. Okay, see how I've got the solder it's right here. I just take one of those. That's why I have so many of those. During gluing, I literally empty the bench of all of these. I've got ones, twos, threes, nuts, and man, this big one. I just empty the bench for when I'm gluing stuff. All right, get a nice ball on there. Good one. Maybe a little more. So you saw how we did that, right? We just basically heated it up till it melted itself in place, and then we're good to go. Put some acid on. Okay. Right. Okay. Find our piece. This time we're going to do a long. Take the long one. Let's get them lined up. Okay. Now I want to offset. So I'm going to figure out where I can set them down. So if I can set them down right here like this, I'm going to give this a twist until I get it. There we go. Now they're offset and we got the acid on. 
set them down, heat them up. There it is. There is my shaft. Okay. All I got to do now is shape it. And I can just cut off wheel to do that. And then I can install them. So what, what we got here is... One, I'm going to have to trim the shaft until it's, until it's just barely inside there. Two, the shafts are a little too th thick to fit into the slot, so I got to shave them down. And I'm going to do that all on on the cutoff reel there. And I'm going to shave them down. And I got to clean the acid off with some acetone. But that is that's a raw drive shaft right there, ready for shaping. That's not too bad. So in a little bit here, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to make this other one, and then. You get to shape them, tools you can use. A little file. A wire wheel to polish it so it's nice and smooth. And then you want some slack in it so it moves back and forth. So if it's too long, just don't panic. Start over or trim it back a little bit. And because you can unsolder. You can unsolder this at any time, trim it back if you want. Oh, wait, I need to show you something else. Okay. You want the drive shaft to be nice and straight, don't you? First, let's clean it off. Now, I have to straighten out a piece of wire. I've got a, I've got a big, heavy piece of... I've actually got a cut off end of a rail about three inches long that's heavy enough and I put the raw piece of wire on the floor and I put that cut off real railroad track onto it and then I just roll it back and forth like I'm about to do here except I use the heavy one and that straightens out your wire there's two ways to straighten wire one is by pulling the other is by rolling But I can't roll it when it's like this. But I've got a piece on the anvil here that allows me to do that. So then, to make sure that it's nice and straight, I'm just going to go like this. And I can get it down here. And I can make sure. I got a really nice straight drive shaft. And it takes all bends and stuff. So there it is. Now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to file it and polish it. And I'll install it and make the other one. And we'll be good to go. And we'll take a look at what we're going to do next.